this Saturday, we got ourselves the history-making UFC Noche. Um, I believe this is UFC 306, if I'm correct. Yes, 306. And you got Sean O'Malley taking on Marab Delishvili. Pretty sure that's how you say his name. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, for the Bad and White Championship of the World. <clears throat> for the women's, I believe it's either Flyweight or Strawweight Championship of the World. You got yourself... Um, Alexa Grosso taking on Valentino Shevchenko. And also on the undercard, you got yourself the crazy rising star um, Diego Lopez taking on the veteran Brian Ortega. Guys, this is actually a pretty decent card from those three fights. You know, it's not something that's going to be super crazy, you know, um, like what Dana White was making, uh, making it out to be. But we all got to really realize that Dana White is a promoter. Dana White is going to pretty much tell you that... Uh, he has the greatest fight lined up. It's going to be between a mop and a broom. And it's going to be history making. There's no fight in the world better than that. It's what a promoter does. They're trying to sell you on everything and anything they can sell you on. They're salesmen and they want you to buy their product. Nine, nine times out of ten, the product is always great when it comes to the UFC. So, you can never really take him, take his words too, too serious. Because at times, he is telling the truth. He is really telling the truth. So, nonetheless, this is actually going to be a very fun fight night for these um, for these uh, title fights and also for the contender fight on the bottom of the um, of the card. So, let's get into it, shall we? You got Sean O'Malley coming off of a victory over his fight with Cheeto Vera, where she looked good. He looked very dominant. He looked like um, he looked very comfortable in there. It's in my personal opinion, Cheeto Vera didn't really necessarily deserve a title shot. It was pretty much more what Sean O'Malley wanted because he wanted to get that get back because of his unfortunate accident or whatever took place with his ankle. Um, I want to say back in 2020. And uh, so now he got his revenge and now he remains champion of the world by beating Cheeto Vera. Where Marab is, Marab is a pretty much a very tough con um, contender. Beating the, beating the likes of Henry Suhudo, Peter Yan, um, Jose Aldo. He's beating some really good superstars in the middleweight, uh, excuse me, the Bantamweight division. So he's definitely earned his shot. He didn't get his shot before because we all know the former champion of the world was Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling and Peter Yan, or excuse me, Marab were both really good friends, are still really good friends, training partners and such. So we can all understand why that fight did not take place with them. So nonetheless, Al Jermaine is that featherweight now. Marab is going to be fighting for the belt. Let's get into it. We all know the game plan usually for Marab. Marab is going to go for a thousand takedowns. A little over exaggerating, but still. Marab isn't necessarily the most cleanest boxer ever. Um, he is definitely has a height and length disadvantage when regarding Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is the much taller um, opponent. Sean O'Malley is the much more skilled when it comes to boxing. He has some really good wrestling. He has some really good takedown defense and such like we saw against Peter Yan um, when he fought him before he fought for the title. So that's going to be a little tricky to see how Sean O'Malley is able to withstand the pressure because that's what Peter Yan, uh, excuse me, I keep getting them confused. Marab, that's what Marab's going to have to do. He's going to have to pressure Sean O'Malley. He cannot wait on the outside. He cannot wait for opportunities. He's going to have to do what he does best and pressure Sean O'Malley. Do not give Sean O'Malley room to be the sniper that he is. Cannot do that. You got to go press him up against the fence. You got to get up close to him. You got to pretty much go for those takedowns, multiple takedowns. Even if it's multiple takedowns that are failed, as long as you get a few in, you got to do that. And then you got to use that ground to pound. You got to. You got to count. You got to pretty much tire Sean O'Malley out because Sean O'Malley is a sniper and a very dangerous on the feet. On Sean O'Malley's side, like I just mentioned, sniper, very dangerous on the feet. He has to pretty much keep uh, Marab at bay. He has to pretty much utilize the outside <clears throat> and utilize his boxing 100%. Because if he doesn't, um, the pressure is just going to be a little too much for him. And this is by far one of the most, I feel, dangerous opponents that, um, that Sean O'Malley has faced. You know, I want to say maybe it could have been or would have been... Uh, Aljamain Sterling, but that fight did not take place, or not take place, uh, take place how we all thought it would, would have, um, with Sean O'Malley knocking out Aljamain in the second round. So, with that being said, he really, really needs to do his best to keep Marab at bay, do his best to really utilize, um, utilize his great footwork and his great boxing and his great technique. He has to do all those things. If he doesn't, it's going to be a long night for Sean O'Malley. And if Sean, if Marab doesn't 
put the pressure on to uh, Sean O'Malley. It's going to be a long night for him because I could possibly even see an early round knockout for O'Malley. That's the main event, guys. In the co-main event, you got yourself a trilogy fight where in the first fight, Alexa Grosso choked out Valentina. And in the second fight, it ended up being a draw. This fight is um, going to be a very another very high technical chess match, I feel, by Alexa Grosso. She's going to be very careful. She's going to utilize her wrestling, which she has the very um, the more more skills in over Valentina. Valentina has the more striking, more the better and the cleaner, crisper striking over Alex Grosso, I feel. So, but what Valentina is going to have to really do is make sure <clears throat> she does not get too uh, creative in there. You know, keep it basic, keep it simple, go for your basic kicks, your basic punches, your basic not, um, your basic uh, maneuvers and your basic combinations. None of the spinning stuff, none of this fancy stuff. Because that's how you get caught, that's how you get taken down, and that's how um, the time runs out and you end up becoming, um, you end up losing the round, I should say. You end up losing the rounds because you are, you've been taken down because of some of the fancy stuff you're trying to do like she tried to do in that second fight. Now, a lot of people feel like she should have won that second fight and it was due to bad judging. Well, you never know. You never want to leave it in the hands of the judges. We know this. We've heard it multiple times. Never leave it in the hands of the judges. And I feel like Valentino Shevchenko knows this. Valentino Shevchenko knows that Alexa Grosso is going to have the fans by her side. That they're, she's going to have um, a little bit more of a home field advantage on her side. So she's going to have to try extra harder. She's going to have to try to really stop Alexa Grosso. She's going to have to really make it crystal clear that she won all these rounds and not make it any closer than it already was in those other in the in the second fight. The first fight, it was different. She got choked out because again, Alexa Grosso is really great on the ground, really um high level wrestling, high level submission game. So that's something that Valentina really wants to do her best to uh, stay away from. But on the other hand, you never know what happens. It could be a reverse. You never know. Uh, Valentina could be become a more of a wrestler, and Alexa Grosso could be a more more of a striker. But the way I see this fight taking place, I see Alexa Grosso utilizing her wrestling, utilizing that pressure that she always does, and taking Valentina to the ground, possibly even getting a late round submission in the fourth round. Why do I feel that? Because Valentina is getting much older. Valentina is possibly slowing down just a tad bit because Alexa Grosso is a little bit more younger. And it's been a long time since these two been in the cage together. That's why I personally.